All right, so how do we evaluate? How do we evaluate these line integrals? We know how they're defined. It's just the path integral of the dot product of f with t hat, big t hat. Well, we use parameterizations just like we did with path integrals. But there's an important difference, and this is getting back to direction matters. We must use a parameterization C that traces out curly C in the forward direction. Okay, that's important. That's important. Okay, for path integrals, we didn't really, we didn't care about that. Another important piece of uh, information that we're going to assume is that the vector function, C, is regular in the sense that the derivative is nowhere the zero vector. Why? Well, we're going to divide by the length of C dash at some point. So we don't want to divide by zero. Okay. In this case, C dash is a non-zero tangent vector pointing in the forward direction. So to produce a unit tangent vector, t hat, all we do is take the tangent vector and divide by its length. So that produces our unit tangent vector, big T, big T hat. Okay, so how do we actually find this um, or compute this line integral? What's the actual computation involved? Again, glad you asked. From here to here, this is just the definition of the line integral. Now, the tangential component of f along c of t is just this dot product. So I'm going to replace what's in brackets here with this, and we know that the ds element is just the magnitude of c dash dt. Okay, so I can now replace t hat c of t with this and cancel these things out. So we end up with this simple, computationally important representation for a line integral, okay? So, in other words, this is just the integral that you know. It's the dot product of these two things. You'll get a function of t and just integrate it from t equals a to t equals b. Okay, so let's do an example. Calculate the circulation of this vector field around the circle with radius A and centre at the origin. And we're going to orient it in an anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so we know which, which way the unit vector, the unit tangent vector is pointing. Okay, so... So here's our closed curve. Essentially, we're asked to integrate around that curve. And for that, we need a parameterization. OK, so a natural parameterization here would be, of course, a cos t, comma, a sin t, right? Okay. Oh, I guess I should mm, parameterize. I seem to switch between, between English and American English occasionally. Okay, so it's a familiar, familiar story now. Calculate the derivative of our parameterization, evaluate the vector field along the parameterization, 
and take the dot product. Okay, so here's the derivative and f along our parameterization. What's that going to be? Well, x equals a cos t, y equals a sine t. Sub them in here. We're going to get something like minus a sine t, a cos t. Hmm. Okay, so we've got our necessary elements. Let's dot the two um, vector functions of interest together and then integrate. Okay, so what have we got here? Yes, a squared. Now, in this case, it's going to break down to a squared sine squared plus a, uh, a, a squared sine squared t plus a squared cos squared t, which is just a squared. Now, again, a is a constant here. It is rare. It is rare that you will get this nice simplification. The dot product is a constant. Hmm. All right, so finally, we calculate the circulation. Okay, so we're happy with that.